Everyone in the office had a chuckle over Nancy, the quiet cleaning lady, but one day the boss had her sit in on some crucial meetings. The secretary was so surprised that their hair practically turned gray. Not many people noticed Nancy at the construction firm's office. She was attired in her formal outfit and bright yellow gloves. Nancy worked tirelessly to keep the windows, floors, and trash clean. She never let anyone know how she felt about her job. Instead, she silently toiled away, never distracting the staff with conversations. Her selfless work ethic was admirable and worth recognition. The boss was always impressed with the woman's work ethic. The office space was always tidy, neat, and giving off a sparkling, just-minted feel. Despite being a valued member of staff, Nancy was often referred to by the wrong name by her colleagues and some refused to even learn it. Day in, day out, she carried out monotonous and laborious work, never varying from her routine. Then one day, while tidying up her boss's office, Nancy stumbled upon a peculiar dialogue while seated at the table. The boss and his secretary seemed to be having a very agitated conversation and were actively gesturing with their hands. So, what am I supposed to do now? How are we going to negotiate tomorrow? Elliot Clark asked his voice sounding. It was under his leadership that the company had been flourishing for several years. The boss was angry because important negotiations with representatives of a Chinese company were planned for the next day, and his in-house translator got in Jinnah and had to be admitted to the hospital the day before. I don't know, sir. Maybe we should bring in an outside interpreter. We could try contacting a translation agency. For example, Arthur Johnson. He was feeling guilty as he held two positions. At first, the secretary and the recruiter, that's not an option. I saw how they work. Their translations are so bad that it's impossible to understand what the partners are talking about, if only it were a simpler language, French or Spanish, for example. But Chinese, there are a few experts who really know this language. Mr. Clark said doubt. At that moment, Nancy, who involuntarily heard the entire conversation from beginning to end, looked at her superiors with a silent question. What is it, Nancy? Are you done cleaning as the secretary irritably? The young cleaning lady was a little embarrassed and then tucking away her banks that had stuck out from under her work cap. She said, yes, I'm done, Mr. Johnson, but that's not what I wanted to say. The thing is, if you need an interpreter, I can help you and what can you do? May I ask, will you talk to our Chinese partners using gestures? The boss asked with irony in his voice. Nancy got even more embarrassed, her face blushing. No, sir. I know this language very well and I can help you, she answered, plucking up her courage. The boss and his secretary looked at each other in disbelief, still unaware about what was happening, and then Elliot Clark opened the safe and took out a copy of the contract written in Chinese. He handed it to the young cleaning lady saying, here, read it out loud, and then translate what you read. To the great surprise of both men, Nancy picked up the piece of paper full of Chinese characters without a shadow of a doubt and began to read confidently. Then without a moment's hesitation, she translated everything she had read and even pointed out two spelling errors in the text. Needless to say, the whole situation impressed the boss and the secretary. They were truly amazed. Nancy, how do you know this language so well, and why are you working as a cleaner? Elliot Clark asked the girls, simply smiled, shyly and shrugged, in response. Of course, the head of the company understood that he was taking a serious risk, hiring an office cleaner for negotiations. However, he didn't really have a better option, so he decided to. Well, Nancy, I'll give you a chance to prove yourself and interpret for us during tomorrow's negotiations. Now finish up with your work and Mr. Johnson will take you shopping for some new clothes. You can't come to negotiations in your cleaning uniform. Mr. Clark said smiling. Nancy nodded in agreement and left the office to go change. Half an hour later, Nancy and the secretary were already standing in the clothing store in the middle of the shopping. The sales assistant appreciated Nancy's slim body and quickly picked out an office outfit she needed. In response to her glance at Mr. Johnson, Nancy saw him smiling and holding his thumb up in approval. Our cleaning ladies are really beautiful, the man thought taking Nancy home. As it turned out, the young lady lived in a rented apartment on the outskirts of the city. In parting, Arthur Johnson reminded the newly minted translator what time she needed to be at the office, and then disappeared into the night in his expensive car. The next day, Nancy woke up earlier than usual and immediately set to work on her appearance. After spending at least an hour in front of the mirror, she finally put on her business attire and went to the office. During the negotiations, Mr. Clark and his secretary were extremely anxious about the outcome of the. However, despite all their fears, Nancy did great and the delegation from China was very much pleased with the translator. 
who showed such deep knowledge of their native language. Congratulations, Nancy. Honestly, I didn't expect you to do this good. You should quit your cleaning job and think about a career at our company. The boss said, pleased with the successful outcome of the negotiations. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful, Mr. Clark. That'd be great. Nancy replied modestly well. What are you waiting for then? Let me see your documents and your diploma, and I'll get you hired as the full-time translator. The secretary intervened in the converse. In response to this, Nancy threw her hands up and explained that she didn't have any documents on her at the time. Okay, can you bring them in later? I don't think it's that important, especially after what you did for us today. The boss hastened to ease up the situation. Nancy breathed a sigh of relief and having gotten the management's permission left the office. Meanwhile, the boss asked his secretary to vet the mysterious girl who was working as a cleaning lady, but knew perfect Chinese. Arthur Johnson readily agreed to conduct the background check. Part of the secretary's zeal was due to his desire to please the boss, while the other part was due to the fact that he actually took a liking to Nancy, especially after her wonderful transformation from the quiet cleaning lady to the Chinese-speaking office. Beauty, it took Arthur about a week to find all the necessary information, and when he came to the chief's office with the folder in his hands, he had a satisfied smile on his. Here, Mr. Clark, I found all there is, but maybe you should ask Nancy to come in first so she could tell you everything herself suggested. The secretary, the boss, agreed, and soon the young lady was already standing in front of him, unsure about how to start her story. Finally plucking up her courage, she started speaking. As it turned out, the former cleaning lady was actually Nancy. The woman's father was a wealthy businessman who lost his wife to a difficult childbirth when he was 43 years old. Fortunately, the doctors managed to save the newborn girl. The couple couldn't get pregnant for a long time, and when it finally happened, Amanda White's health had already been undermined by all kinds of hormonal treatments. Brandon White took his wife's death extremely. It took him about six months to fight his depression. Fortunately, the man did find the strength to continue living and to take care of his newborn daughter. Thus, despite not having a mother, Nancy was surrounded with love and care from an early age. The girl also had an amazing nanny, Mrs. Reynolds, who loved the baby very. Everything went well exactly until the millionaire widow brought a new woman into the house. By a strange coincidence, she looked exactly like the millionaire's late wife, and she even had the same name, Amanda. As soon as the stepmother moved into the family, the situation in the house immediately changed for the worst. Apparently, Amanda disliked Nancy from the first minutes of their acquaintance and seemed to have made Nancy her number one. Mrs. Reynolds immediately saw through the cunning gold digger who decided to instill her own order in the house, but she couldn't do anything about it. Mr. White loved his new wife and didn't allow anyone to speak eye of her. As it turned out a little later, the woman had very far-sighted plans for the millionaire widow. She was planning on getting her hands on Mr. White's fortune to make sure Nancy didn't get in her way. As soon as the girl got a bit older, Amanda suggested that Mr. White should send her off to a boarding school in England. Thus, Amanda was planning to get rid of the hated stepdaughter and her nanny in one fell swoop. Brendan White liked his wife's idea and without thinking long about it, he bought Nancy a ticket to London. Time passed, even though she was far from home and missing her beloved nanny, Nancy did receive a good education and learned several languages. Unfortunately, by that time, her father's health wasn't great. He was having serious problems with his. During Nancy's studies abroad, Brandon White became a frequent visitor at the cardiology department of a private clinic. However, despite all the doctor's efforts, Brandon's last heart attack left the man no chance at survival. Amanda was so sly that she wasn't even going to tell Nancy about her father's death, and it was only thanks to her nanny's call that she learned what had happened to her father. When the grieving daughter returned to her homeland, the father's body was already buried without even letting her stepdaughter come. To her sense, the stepmother told the young lady that her father had bequeathed all the fortune to his wife. How is that possible? Can I see a copy of the will? Nancy asked timidly, but Amanda didn't want to hear anything. Having allowed the hated stepdaughter to spend one night at the house, she kicked her out the next morning. Meanwhile, all her documents mysteriously disappeared from Nancy's bag left without any means to support herself. Nancy decided to find a job and then figure out what to do next. So that's how Nancy became the cleaning lady at the construction firm's offices where she proved herself as an excellent employee. Having heard the young woman's story, the secretary paused for a second and then said something that almost caused Nancy to faint. Actually, Amanda lied to you. Ms. White, your father left his entire fortune to you, his daughter said, Arthur Johnson, not taking his eyes off the girl. 
The tense silence that hung in the office was interrupted by the boss's voice. Mr. Johnson, I think you need to help Ms. White get some justice. The secretary nodded and decided not to postpone such an important assignment. The following day, a group of people wearing uniforms and guided by Arthur arrived at Amanda's house. It was revealed that the devious widow had taken the property illegally and was living there with her secret lover. Everything began while Brandon White was still alive. Now that everything has returned to normal and justice was served, Nancy asked her cherished nanny back into their home, which the latter happily accepted as she was also distressed over their ill-fated parting. Arthur and Nancy had a special connection, and they both felt something special. Their mutual infatuation made the moments shared between them very pleasant and filled them with true joy.